Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak to reasonable people. Judge for yourselves what I say. Is not the cup of blessing that we bless a participation in the blood of Christ? And is not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ? Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. Consider the people of Israel. Are not those who eat the sacrifices fellow partakers in the altar? Am I suggesting then that food sacrificed to an idol is anything, or that an idol is anything? No, but the sacrifices of pagans are offered to demons, not to God. And I do not want you to be participants with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons too. You cannot partake in the table of the Lord and the table of demons too. Are we trying to provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than He? Everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible, but not everything is edifying. No one should seek his own good, but the good of others. Eat anything sold in the meat market without raising questions of conscience, for the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. If an unbeliever invites you to a meal and you want to go, eat anything set before you without raising questions of conscience. But if someone tells you, this food was offered to idols, then do not eat it for the sake of the one who told you and for the sake of conscience, the other one's conscience, I mean not your own. For why should my freedom be determined by someone else's conscience? If I partake in the meal with thankfulness, why am I denounced because of that for which I give thanks? So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. Do not become a stumbling block, whether to Jews or Greeks or the church of God, as I also try to please everyone in all I do. For I am not seeking my own good, but the good of many, that they may be saved. Bless now, Lord our God, the study of your word. Lord Jesus, help us to understand your words by the power of your Holy Spirit. Speak it to us, and in your name we ask these things. Amen. From our study last week in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 1 to 13, we see how the Apostle Paul appealed to the Corinthian church to look at the tragic history of Israel, who, after being delivered from slavery in Egypt, after having crossed the Red Sea, after having partake of the bread from heaven and water from the rock, who is a type of Christ Jesus our Lord, many failed to make it to the promised land for the sin of idolatry, which is, in essence, the sin of unbelief. Make no mistake about it. Idolatry is the sin of unbelief, which leads to the sin of selfishness, immorality, and rebellion. So idolatry is not just the worship of statues, but it also pertains to gratifying the desires of our flesh instead of walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, as we continue with our study in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, this time from verses 14 to 33, here we will find the Apostle Paul warning the Corinthian church, and he is also warning us today to flee from idolatry. And the good thing about the Word of God is that it not only warns us about something, but it also tells us how to do it. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 14 to 33, we must flee idolatry by shaping up, according to verses 14 to 24, by speaking up, according to verses 25 to 30, and by stepping up, according to verses 31 to 33. In verses 14 to 17, we need to shape up by being wise and knowing right from wrong. Verses 14 to 17 reads, Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak to reasonable people. Judge for yourselves what I say. Is not the cup of blessing that we bless a participation in the blood of Christ. And it's not the bread that we break a participation in the body of Christ. Because there is one loaf, we who are many are one body, for we all partake of the one loaf. Let me give the background again. In Corinth is an agora or a marketplace that is next to the temple of Artemis or Diana. A lot of the meat sold in the marketplace was also offered to Artemis. And some Christians in Corinth were willfully eating meat that they knew were sacrificed to idols. And so Paul, in essence, was asking a simple question. 
Do they think it is good and acceptable for Christians to partake of the Lord's Supper and eat food sacrificed to demons? The answer, of course, is no. Let's bring that question to our time today. Do you think it is acceptable for Christians to worship Jesus on a Sunday and live for the world, watch things that are not glorifying to the Lord on the TV or the movies Monday to Saturday, and be a Christian on Sunday? The answer, of course, is no. So if we are to get rid of idolatry in our lives, we need to be wise and know that which is right from wrong. Consider Ezekiel 44 to 23. They are to teach my people the difference between the holy and the common and show them how to discern between the clean and the unclean. We must also flee idolatry by shaping up, and that includes being wary because action speaks louder than words, according to verses 18 to 22 of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, which reads, Consider the people of Israel. Are not those who eat the sacrifices fellow partakers in the altar? Am I suggesting then that food sacrificed to an idol is anything or that an idol is anything? No, but the sacrifices of pagans are offered to demons, not to God. And I do not want you to be participants with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons too. You cannot partake in the table of the Lord and the table of demons too. Are we trying to provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than He? When the people of Israel bring their fellowship offerings to the altar, they partake of the food with the priest, and so they share in their sacrifice to Yahweh. In the same way, when the Christians in Corinth actively eat meat that are being sacrificed in the temple of Artemis or Diana, they are aligning themselves in the worship of Diana, whether they realize it or not. In the same way, our actions speak louder than words. Even if we wear shirts with Christian verses on them, but if our lives do not match what we profess as Christians and we lie, cheat, steal, participate in revelry, and do not prioritize our relationship with Jesus, then all we are is being a nominal Christian or Christians in name only. Our actions is what determine whether we are Christians or not. Consider 1 John 3.18, Little children, let us not love in word and speech, but in action and truth. Again, let us not love in word and speech, but in action and truth. Our actions as Christians should match our words. Titus 1.16 says, They profess to know God, but by their actions they deny Him. They are detestable, disobedient, and unfit for any good deed. And I pray that will not be a description for any of us. In verses 23 to 24, we must flee idolatry by shaping up and being winsome as we live for the brethren. Verses 23 to 24 reads, Everything is permissible, but not everything is beneficial. Everything is permissible, but not everything is edifying. No one should seek his own good, but the good of others. Again, some of the Corinthian Christians are using the excuse that they can do anything they want to do. Well, even if that is true, not everything is beneficial and not everything is edifying. Just because you can do something doesn't mean you should do it. Everything we do must be for the good of others. You see, when you think of the welfare of your brother or sister in Christ, you become less self-centered, which is exactly the cure for idolatry. Galatians 5.13 says, For you brothers were called to freedom, but do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. Rather, serve one another in love. How do we flee idolatry and shape up? We need to be wise and know right from wrong. We need to be wary because our actions speak louder than words. And we need to be winsome by living for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Another way we flee idolatry is by speaking up, according to verses 25 to 30. In verses 25 to 27 of 1 Corinthians chapter 10, we flee idolatry by speaking up through the study of the truth of God's word. Verses 25 to 27 reads, Eat anything sold in the meat market without raising questions of conscience. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. If an unbeliever invites you to a meal and you want to go, eat anything set before you without raising questions of conscience. We as Christians don't have to live a paranoid life. There are some Christians who, because of their lack of knowledge of the Word of God, restrict themselves from enjoying things God wanted us to enjoy. To be sure, there are TV shows and movies we should not watch as Christians, but not all TV shows and movies are demonic just because they are non-Christians. 
We must find balance in our lives, and to do that, we must have a good grasp of God's Word. John 8.32 says, Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. We will be set free by the truth of God's Word. 2 Timothy 2.15 from the modern English version says, Study to show yourself approved by God, a workman who need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. To flee idolatry, we must speak up by studying God's word and by standing for the truth of God's word, according to verses 28 to 29, which reads, But if someone tells you this food was offered to idols, then do not eat it, for the sake of the one who told you and for the sake of conscience. The other one's conscience, I mean, not your own. For why should my freedom be determined by someone else's conscience? So the Apostle Paul is saying to the Corinthian Christians not to eat meat they knew were sacrificed to idols, not because idols have power, but for the sake of the one who offered the food sacrificed to idols, so they will know where we stand. Folks, this is really important. I would say I am guilty of this, but we as the evangelical church of the Lord Jesus Christ I must say that we have failed to make a stand on things that matter most. That is why our society is so plunged in perversion, in deception, and lies. We as a church must make a stand, even if our stand is unpopular to the world. And you know what else? As Christians, the world will never accept us anyway. So why even try to appease the world? Why even try to make the world like us? We should not try to appease the world. We should not try to make the world like us. That is not our job. Our job as Christians is to make a stand for the truth of God's word. 1 Corinthians 16.13 says, Be on the alert. Stand firm in the faith. Be men of courage. Be strong. Ephesians 6.14 says, Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist with the breastplate of righteousness arrayed. We must flee idolatry by speaking up through the study of God's word, by making a stand, and by actually speaking the truth according to 1 Corinthians 10 verse 30, which reads, If I partake in the meal with thankfulness, why am I denounced because of that for which I gave thanks? Paul is asking a plausible question by a Corinthian believer. In essence, the Corinthian believer might say, But wait a minute, Paul, I gave thanks for the meat sacrificed to idols. Isn't that enough? What's the big deal? The point Paul is trying to make is not whether you gave thanks for the food sacrificed to idols or not. The point is, why do you want to eat it in the first place? Let me bring this to our current time. Many Christians ask if it's okay to get that tattoo or for some Christian man to get an earring. My question to them is this, why do you want to get it in the first place? If it's to be accepted by the world or to fit with the world, don't do it. Trying to please the world and fit in with the world is idolatry. And when we do that, we are not speaking the truth of what our testimony should be. Our lives should speak loud and clear that we are followers of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we must never underestimate the power of our testimony. Look at Revelation 12, 11. They have conquered him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives so as to shy away from death. So flee from idolatry by speaking up through the study of the truth, by standing for the truth, and by speaking the truth of God's word. And we have to flee idolatry by stepping up according to verses 31 to 33 of 1 Corinthians 10. Step up means to take responsibility or to volunteer. A good way to rid ourselves of idolatry is by stepping up or serving. In verse 31, we must step up and serve the Lord Jesus Christ and worship Him with our lives. Verse 31 reads, So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all to the glory of God. This really is the antidote to idolatry. If you want to remove the idols in your life that comes between you and the Lord Jesus Christ, the best way to do that is to worship the Lord Jesus and break down the idols in your life with one big sweep. Romans 12 one says, Therefore I urge you, brothers, on account of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. Get rid of the idols in your life by stepping up and serve the body of Christ, according to verse 32, which reads, Do not become a stumbling block to the church of God. Now, I did not skip 
the part where it says whether to Jews or Greeks. I'm going to deal with that later. But I wanted to focus on verse 32, which says, Do not become a stumbling block to the church of God. The more we serve our brothers and sisters in Christ, the less attention we spend on ourselves and the idol of ourselves. So learn to serve your brothers and sisters in Christ because that is God's will for us. Ephesians 6, 7 says, Serve with goodwill as to the Lord and not to men. Serve your brothers and sisters instead of becoming a stumbling block to them. The phrase, do not become a stumbling block, can be rephrased as, do not become a discouragement to the brethren. 1 Corinthians 8, 9 says, be careful, however, that your freedom does not become a stumbling block to the weak or does not become a discouragement to the weak brother or sister in Christ. Don't become a discouragement to your brother and sister in Christ and do not become a discouragement to your pastor by your lifestyle. Let's get rid of idolatry by stepping up and serving the gospel of Christ by the fulfilling of the Great Commission according to verses 32 to 33 which reads, Do not become a stumbling block whether to Jews or Greeks as I also try to please everyone in all I do for I am not seeking my own good but the good of many that they may be saved. Our lives should be lived not only for the encouragement of the brethren, but also to show the world the hope that we have in Jesus so that they see the good works in us and bring them to Christ Jesus our Lord. 1 Corinthians 9 verses 19 to 23, it says there, Though I am free of obligation to anyone, I make myself a slave to everyone to win as many as possible. To the Jews, I became like a Jew to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became like one under the law. Though I myself am not under the law to win those under the law. To those without the law, I become like one without the law. Though I am not outside the law of God, but am under the law of Christ to win those without the law. To the weak, I became weak to win the weak. I have become all things to all people so that by all possible means I might save some. That is what Paul's heart's desire. To live his life. To win unbelievers to the Lord Jesus. And I pray that we will also be like that. How do we step up again in order to get rid of idolatry? We must serve the Lord Jesus and worship Him with our lives. We must serve the body of Christ and be a blessing to our brothers and sisters in Christ. And we must serve the gospel of Christ and bring the lost to Him. Let's get rid of idolatry by shaping up, by speaking up, and stepping up. How about you? Are you fleeing idolatry by shaping up, speaking up, and stepping up? And I pray that you are. One thing that I desire 